we are here today on this windy blustery day and i'm hoping the sound comes through really good getting ready to do the much anticipated highly requested review of sunshine chewing <laughs> sunshine is our double cab multi cab yep and we got it in october right after we got here and so we've had it for about four months now and Cindy's driven it a few times, so she's got a little bit and can give a little bit of practicality to it. But we're actually going to start the review with Cindy. So it's always good in a girl's perspective. So ladies first. Uh oh. Okay, so what's my take on this one? <laughs> okay, one is a, I like this one because it's automatic. And this, then I could just do, you know, park, reverse, neutral, so what, the normal thing. And it's just drive, so even you don't push the brake, you can just drive it without pushing the brake. I like it. And it's not like, I don't really need to pull this. Actually, it's so comfortable. If I really want to get it closer, I could adjust like this. And ta-da! So I just need... I don't need to adjust this one. So the one disadvantage here is this one got broken. Yes, we need to take that back down. So, but so far for um, convenience and practicality, we have like normally four people that you could do or right inside. So four of them. Normally it's Mama, Papa, JJ and Chat Chop and Dudo. Because yeah, we, we fit four people in the back. Yes. And at the back. According to my crew, my family, they said six people can fit in in here. But so far, we let four people here. And we can put a lot of stuff. Groceries, luggages, and so and so and so. When we uh, travel from city to Sibonga, all our luggages are in here, right? Yes. So, uh, color wise, I like bright color, so I kind of like it. Before, I was like, no, I like like blue, but I kind of started to like it because it's. Kind of grows on you. Huh? It kind of grows on you. Yeah, and it's bright. It is definitely bright. Um, disadvantage. I don't really drive it much, so John can give you more of the details aside from the transmission that it's just... I don't know. But, um, overall, um, I like the... Uh, I did not try to park yet, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm so scared to like drive in the city, but that's for sure. But I've driven in the mountain downhill right yes and in the dirt road in car car uh -oh. and one in going to argo so yeah. driven three times no four times. four times four times four times yeah so, yeah can you drove around sabonga a little bit so actually i don't see what else I, it's more for for my for a girl's practicality I didn't know the, the the tires or so and so forth. I don't know about the, I don't know about that. The purpose is just we have a vehicle for transportation. What do you think? I don't know if you accept my review. But <laughs> <laughs> overall, from one to ten, what's my rate? Maybe. How seven. hard is it to drive as compared to the Xterra? Sun, uh, summer. Oh, sun, summer is the brake is just so sticky. So it's not hard. I will say both have perks and disadvantage. You know, I got will in in summer i'm just learning how to drive so i get so nervous before with this because i know <coughs> oh, 
That's one thing you saw to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, the horn's a little touchy. I've done that more than once in traffic. Ooh, okay, so that's my review for it now. It's so windy. Yeah, the wind's kicking up pretty bad, so review probably going to be a little bit shorter. Yep. Okay, now my turn, from the guy's perspective. And from the guy's perspective, whenever she's in it, I gotta make sure to slide back the chairs, the, the seats. I like a lot of it, uh, but I wish I would have known a few things about multi-cabs to begin with that the automatic is very nice for Cindy and I'm definitely glad we got it because of Cindy. But uh, I'll show you a little bit more here in a minute. The engine in this is only a 660cc. It is a tiny engine. And by having the automatic, the standard versions have a high low gearbox. And so going up some of these mountains and stuff like that, you can drop into low range and be able to climb a little bit better hills, plus have the advantage of manually shifting so, you, so that you control the gear range you're in. The automatic, it tries to shift up a little too quickly. And I've learned to actually take and lock it into low uh, first gear, second gear, going up a lot of these hills, and it handles the hills way better. Uh, right now, we've been averaging about, and I'll, I'll if I'm way off on this, I'll, I'll correct it. I believe about nine kilometers per per liter. I have no idea what that works out to in, in miles per gallon. I'll, I'll include that as a note below. Overall, it's not too bad. Uh, it does have anti-lock. It supposedly has anti-lock brakes on here. I have never tried to verify whether or not they really do. But when you first turn it on, you do get the warning lights for anti-lock brake system. And I got surprised that there actually is an OBD port on this down here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. There we go. Right back in here, there is a port to put an OBD uh, scanner in here. Whether or not one from the U.S. would work or not, I don't know. Whether or not I could get one here, I don't know. And that's a big part of the problem that, I, that we're working with right now, is a lot of this, I just don't know. We got lights for sunshine. I'd like to put a brush grill in the front and get some better lights on here. That These lights just aren't quite cutting it. And out here, you need lights on these roads. So we got a little bit better lights, but I, I've got no place to mount it. This is all uh, thin fiberglass that it, it, you can see how bad it warps. So trying to mount something to that would not be the greatest idea. Uh, I've asked one guy about it and was originally gonna do it as stainless. Might go to a, a blacked out uh, steel though. Uh, powder coated black steel that he's saying the stainless that you get here is pretty thin and kind of flimsy so I, I don't know maybe we'll have to figure that one out but I, I've tried getting wiring for this a couple times eh, none of the stores around here have it Lazada has some wire but that's going to be about a week to get here. But I haven't got the grill for it anyhow, so that's not a big deal. That over here, you actually access the engine 
underneath the two front seats. That the oil dipstick, the transmission dipstick, the air filter, and I still haven't seen the oil filter, but it's my understanding that it's underneath and it's pretty easy to get to. But I haven't crawled down there to find anything yet. Uh, everything in here is just a simple fuel injected three cylinder turbocharged engine. It shouldn't be that terribly difficult to work with. And as I was doing cleaning, I found out this only has two screws holding it down. And so should be pretty easy to get and pull out. The, the, this plastic pulls out, but there's two bolts underneath it that this centerpiece is bolted down to. And so I'm thinking it might be pretty easy to pull that out. But on the other side, it's the same type setup. You have a pair of latches down here. And you have to fold the seat forward a little bit. But it just folds back. You have the battery, the oil fill. And again, I haven't found the spark plugs in here. Uh, I know they've got to be under here. I'm thinking they're underneath this bar. Uh, I haven't seen a distributor either. So... And online, there's actually not a whole lot of information about these. But the engine itself is here. So you know there, there's not anything in front. Uh, what is in front... for it the lug wrench is actually in the glove box but they've got the radiator cap and the expansion tank the brake fluids in, up here and the windshield wipers up here now a lot of multi caps don't but some do and I'd like to get uh, a better look at one that did. The wipers are actually backwards. By doing this, there's a huge section that doesn't get cleaned in, in the uh, driver's path. It's not a safety issue, but it's, it's just a, a goofy issue that, it, that it's kind of uh, annoying. Now, the tires on this are a 13 inch tire I'll look and actually put it in the description the, the exact uh, tire to it yeah as far as in the inside any of the longer trips that we've taken so far we've never had to have the cab closed up windows up because of rain or whatever but it does get warm and the air conditioner whether it's just too small for the vehicle whether this whether it was an air conditioner out of a single cab and just isn't strong enough or what it, it doesn't cool it blows out nice cold air but it doesn't blow out enough air to cool the the cab and the weather here is good enough to just roll down the windows now the nice thing to this is both sides have a sliding door that we haven't done it yet but I'm gonna get um, the it, it kind of looks like artificial turf the the plat the old plastic artificial turf and make floor mats for both the front and back the back I'm just gonna do is one piece all the way across the front uh, I'm probably gonna have to cut it and 
cut it and put a driver's side and passenger side just because of all the obstacles for it. I'm just going to take some cardboard and make a template and cut it out that way and just as I get the piece cut and fit well I'll set it down and tape another one to it and just do it that way. The seats actually uh, the, the back seats can adjust quite a bit forward or back. Yeah, these seats actually adjust quite a bit forward or back. And the other cool thing to it is on the side of the seat over here, they tip forward. And then there's a latch down and underneath here that lets them forward. Now, I saw a video the other day decided to take these off. Okay. Yeah, you do that and, it's, and it folds completely forward. Okay. That's kind of like a lot of the cars back home that they do that. But there's a little bit of storage underneath here that as you can see, we get an air compressor and, and some other stuff that's stored in under here. Uh, yeah, this is for me. I got a chair cane. The, there, there's days I wind up using that more than I really like but uh, overall I, I like a lot of what they've done with it the builder that we got there's some goofy uh, signs that it wasn't the best of care taken when he did this when, when they did the, the rebuild to it that they actually get these in parts and that they're shipped in from Japan is surplus parts and they buy the sur they buy them as surplus parts which is legal but then they reassemble them and take them and convert them from a right hand drive back to a left hand drive and there's a handful of things that they didn't swap over that needed to, like the wipers, the door, the window controls are, are, are backwards. The mirror, the mirror adjust, it's got power mirrors. And again, that they're, the, it's backwards that you need to change the, the right, the, the, the right position controls the left mirror, the left position controls the right mirror. And it's just a bunch of goofy things like that that make me say they didn't take as good a care doing the stuff. Uh, not too long after we got it, the spare tire fell off because it was a bolt that either wasn't put in, went missing, or wasn't put in right. Uh, that now on the gear shift, there is a high low range selector. And I've tried it and it doesn't do anything. So either I'm not using it correctly, which is entirely possible. And again, that's a drawback to these is that they're, I don't care what vehicle I've had back in the States. I, I could find information on it. Uh, you could find a freaking ton of YouTube videos on how to do anything on them. And I've had some older classic vehicles that, I, that I've worked with in have not had any problems finding information about them. These things, there's just nothing online. I am starting to find a little bit more. Um, back in the States, there's a few of them out there that they're not terribly commonly imported. Most of them are still the right-hand drive that they haven't done the conversion to them. And then they're called a Suzuki Carry. They're not called the, the Multicab or the DA62. So, yeah, they, they, will I be able to find more information on them? I, I don't know. Maybe, probably. Uh, I'm hoping. Supposedly, uh, one of the people that had a video that does import them said that there are some out there that have had the service manuals and owner manuals translated to English. 
and I would love to be able to find one of those, especially the service manual to find out more on this thing. But I've seen some of the translations that they, they wind up with, so it may not be much use at all anyhow, but it, at least it should have the, you know, better pictures and exploded views of some of this stuff to help figure out what it is and where it is. Uh, when I pulled off this center console, that there's a wire down there that's been cut off and not reconnected to anything that I have no idea what is, where it goes to, or anything else. And everything seems to work, so I, I, I just don't know. Uh, would I buy one again? Yeah. I would pay a lot more attention to it. And also there's other people out here that do custom builds that they're a little bit more expensive not horribly so but they'll you give them what you want they sit down and, and discuss well you well you know we just can't do that or yeah we can do that but it'll be this and you know wind up making this cost money you know but you hammer it out what can can and can't be done and they'll custom build it in about a month so that would be a possible option rusco is another big company that they get these and they're a big company so that they have a lot better uh, service departments and they're all through the Philippines. Uh, but there again, here in Cebu, Cebu City, a major city, the second biggest city in, in the Philippines, I've tried to find a Rusco dealer and at best I, I, I've seen some information centers. So it, that may not be as good as I, I'm thinking it would be. But the Rusi bike that we've got, there's dealers all over and they can answer any questions you've got on the thing. So, I don't know. Overall, I'm happy with it. It's a good, solid vehicle for the Philippines. Don't know if I'd want one back in the States. But in the Philippines, this thing's a great vehicle. Uh, would I buy one from Japan Trading Center again? I don't know. Yeah, these seats actually adjust quite a bit forward or back. And the other cool thing to it is on the side of the seat over here, they tip forward. And then there's a latch down and underneath here that lets them forward. Now, I saw a video the other day decided to take these off. Okay. Yeah, you do that and, it's, and it folds completely forward. Okay. That's kind of like a lot of the cars back home that they do that. But there's a little bit of storage underneath here that as you can see, we get an air compressor and, and some other stuff that's stored in under here. Uh, yeah, this is for me. I got a chair cane. The, there, there's days I wind up using that more than I really like but uh, overall I, I like a lot of what they've done with it the builder that we got there's some goofy uh, signs that it wasn't the best of care taken when he did this when, when they did the, the rebuild to it that they actually get these in parts and that they're shipped in from Japan is surplus parts and they buy the sur they buy them as surplus parts which is legal but then they reassemble them and take them and convert them from a right hand drive back to a left hand drive and there's a handful of things that they didn't swap over that needed to, like the wipers, the door, the window controls are, are are backwards. The mirror, the mirror adjust. It's got power mirrors, and again, that they're the it's backwards. That you need to change the the right the the, the right position controls the left mirror. The left position controls the right mirror. And it's just a bunch of goofy things like that that make me say they didn't take as good a care doing this stuff. 
uh, not too long after we got it, the spare tire fell off because it was a bolt that either wasn't put in, went missing, or wasn't put in right. Um, that now on the gear shift, there is a high low range selector. And I, I've tried it and it doesn't do anything. So either I'm not using it correctly, which is entirely possible. And again, that's a drawback to these is that they're, I don't care what vehicle I've had back in the States. I, I could find information on it. Uh, you could find a freaking ton of YouTube videos on how to do anything on them. And, and I've had some older classic vehicles that, I, that I've worked with and have not had any problems finding information about them. These things, there's just nothing online. I am starting to find a little bit more. Um, back in the States, there's a few of them out there that they're not terribly commonly imported. Most of them are still the right-hand drive that they haven't done the conversion to them. And then they're called a Suzuki Carry. They're not called the, the Multicab or the DA62. So... Yeah, they, they, will I be able to find more information on them? I, I don't know. Maybe, probably. Uh, I'm hoping. Supposedly, uh, one of the people that had a video that does import them said that there are some out there that have had the service manuals and owner manuals translated to English. And I would love to be able to find one of those, especially the service manual, to find out more on this thing. But I've seen some of the translations that they, they wind up with, so it may not be much use at all anyhow, but it, at least it should have deep, you know, better pictures and exploded views of some of this stuff to help figure out what it is and where it is. Uh, when I pulled off this center console, if there's a wire down there that's been cut off and not reconnected to anything, that I have no idea what is, where it goes to, or anything else. And everything seems to work, so I, I, I just don't know. Uh, would I buy one again? Yeah. I would pay a lot more attention to it. And also, there's other people out here that do custom builds. That they're a little bit more expensive. Not horribly so. But they'll... You give them what you want. They sit down and, and discuss. Well, you well, you know, we just can't do that. Or yeah, we can do that, but it'll be this, and it'll wind up making this cost money. You know, but you hammer it out what can can and can't be done, and they'll custom build it in about a month. So that would be a possible option. Rusco is another big company that they get these, and they're a big company, so that they have a lot better. Uh, service departments and they're all through the Philippines uh, but there again here in Cebu Cebu City a major city the second biggest city in, in the Philippines I've tried to find a Rusco dealer and at best I, I, I've seen some information centers so it, that may not be as good as I, I'm thinking it would be but the Rusi bike that we've got, there's dealers all over and they can answer any questions you've got on the thing. So, I don't know. Overall, I'm happy with it. It's a good, solid vehicle for the Philippines. Don't know if I'd want one back in the States. But in the Philippines, this thing's a great vehicle. Uh, would I buy one from Japan Trading Center again? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I would know enough to look at a lot of different things that I did. And I, I'm not displeased with this purchase, but I think we could have done a little bit better. But it was the first try and it wasn't that terribly expensive. Uh, I'll put down the, if it's okay with Cindy, I'll put down, I'll include the cost. I just got a thumbs up. Uh, I'll include the figure that we paid for it. And that includes a year of insurance. Uh, two years registration. Yes. And two or three years. Mm hmm. Two or three years. I guess it's two. I, I need to look. Okay, I, I think it's two. But we'll check. We'll double check to be sure. 
and that they're saying that there's a year's warranty on it. Now, Cindy made comment about the transmission. Here, about two months into it, the transmission started slipping. Uh, not slipping, but it, but it shifts a little hard going into from first to second. Uh, and that's not consistent even. That one of the uh, multi-cab groups said to try and clean the transmission sensor. I ain't got a freaking idea where the transmission sensor is on this. And so I wouldn't know where to go to clean it or, or to do anything like that. Uh, Monday, we're going to run it down to the dealer to have them take a look at the mirror. Uh, to have them take a look at the transmission. And we've had it for four months now, so we're going to have them do an oil change and all that. I may bring the oil down that I want used in it and stay there and make sure that the oil does get used in it. Uh, but we're, we'll see how well the dealer handles that. Uh, so keep an eye on the description. The description will change. And I'll let you know how the dealer dealt with that and how long he took. But when we had the spare tire mount issue, uh, what else was wrong with it? The, the dash light stopped working. The side that got broken. Oh, yeah. The spare tire is underneath here. And when it came off, it came off and hit here and tore the mounts really bad. <clears throat> so that this thing was just literally flopping in the breeze. And we were only going to be in Cebu overnight. That we were leaving the next morning and we explained that to the dealer that we're here but we're only here overnight you know we, we really do need it tomorrow morning that, that we are going back and he kind of hemmed and hawed about it but he he did say that that they will do everything they can to get it fixed tonight and sure enough they did that they had everything back running just uh, like it should be the next morning so like I say, that there, there's some little attention to detail that I think could have done better, but they so far that they're seeming to service everything well. So, I, again, check back in about a week or so and look at the description, and I, I will update the description to how long they took and how well they did with it. Uh, if you have any specific or particular questions, uh, if there's enough, I'll, I'll actually revisit the review. If there's just a handful in one of my live streams, feel free to ask about them or just leave it in the messages and I, and I will make sure to a answer them to the best of my ability. But that's really it for me on, on the review at this point. So I hope this isn't terribly long. I'm going to try and edit it down some, but my boo hi. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the review and we hope it answered most of your questions. And we like our little sunshine. Yep. 